Hi, I'm Brian Davis, and welcome to my channel, Brian Davis Scuba. It's a nice sunny morning here in Dubai. Thankfully, the humidity is not too high, so it's quite pleasant. In this video, we're gonna go through everything we've done externally to the boat um, to give you an idea of how much work was involved and the quality of work um, that was done. I hope you enjoy it. This is the first in a series of videos. I was originally just gonna make two videos, one for external, one for internal. But when I started on the internals this week, I realized there's a lot more to show you. So the next video in the series will be what we've done to upgrade all the electrical systems. So I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you subscribe and follow me on Coronet's journey. This is the fore deck. Um, you can see we've got a brand new winch installed, a loft rans. We took the um, opportunity also to chrome the forward cleats. We've got rope lockers on each side, which keeps a nice tidy bow. It also provides additional seating. Over here, we store our sea anchor. So it means it can be rapidly deployed in the event we want to come into wind and slow down in bad weather or in the event of an engine failure offshore or whatever. You can see the anchor launcher, which we, we took the original one and we modified so we could um, self-launch and self-recover. There's a new hatch that we've installed. Um, we fi I find getting hatches very expensive, but we managed to find a, an Italian supplier locally who stocks locally very very cost effective but we had to as you see make a new frame we reinforced the whole of the foredeck where the cleats and the winch sit using a six millimeter plate of stainless steel which um, the winch is bolted to and the cleats are bolted through we also put new timber and glass fiber laminate so in the event of a tow, we've got plenty of strength up front. In the rope lockers, we have uh, tow ropes, which we run from the rear cleats, wrap around this cleat, uh, um, wrap around the front cleats on each side, and then um, are ready to attach a tow line. So the stress is then distributed throughout the four cleats. We also took the opportunity to fit this hatch, and underneath this hatch, we have a um, two-way fan so we can extract um, from the galley uh, salon area or we can bring fresh air in. The windows, these were changed when I first got the boat 20 years ago and have done very very well. Um, they're PVC with them um, uh, at the time was the best glass single pane glass we could get for heat transmission called uh, California glass which we understand is the same glass that was used in BMW cars. You'll see all these railings here are new. Um, when the boat was prior to the refit, the boat was and the wet mooring at a boat yard just up the creek. And during some bad weather, another boat that was at the same shipyard came loose and hit the side of the boat, damaging all the rails. So we had to remove them all. And you'll see in the pictures just coming up now the extent of the damage and how we how it was repaired. At the same time, there was damage to the bottom window frames. So you'll see, we took the opportunity on both sides um, to replace these completely with, with new wood and then glass fiber lamination. While the, prior to this fit out, we did replace the side decks completely. Um, we had a lot of leakage from the side decks and the aft decks and we decided to re-laminate. When we removed the old glass fibre, we found underneath 
the original teak decks. Which were in very bad condition, so we removed the decks completely. Unfortunately, I don't think I have any photographs of that because it was, all, it was before this refit. So then we replaced the side decks with honeycomb, polyethylene honeycomb and glass fibre laminate. And then we've applied an anti-slip finish on top. We've also made provision because it gets very hot here in the summer. You'll see here, we've got window covers, which you'll see in some of the photographs of the boat that we can easily put on. And they fit around the rail around here and then we press stud them down and they look very, very tidy. Just a word on the rails. The original rails had a pin coming up through the gunnel into the stainless steel rails. They were made of mild steel or galvanized, I'm not sure which, but they um, corroded, expanded, and we had to replace all the bottom parts of the, of the vertical uprights for the handrails. And you can see we came up with an ingenious little um, collar type method so we could secure it easily and waterproof to the gunnel without putting anything through it. And it seems to be working very, very well. You'll also notice that we've installed lights that just shine blue light up onto the boat at night and it looks really, really good. We also installed LED strip uh, just above on the window frame, just above the window, which looks really, really cool at night. We've also installed a black water tank, 60 litre black water tank, which we'll show you later in the series or when you, when you see the inside what we've done, um, but we can easily pump it out from here. The boat was fully painted. We used the two part polyurethane and it's held up really, really, really well. The hull has uh, a osmosis protection system from a company called Excalibur. It's got a 20 year guarantee. We've had it on for about 15 years and no sign of osmosis. On top of that, we've got an excellent anti-fouling from Hempel. We've tried many, many um, different anti-foulings and this seems to be the one that works the best in Dubai Creek, which has a notoriously high degree of fouling. This is the main dash. Um, it's made in, we, had, we, um, we made it ourselves in an aluminium composite material. Um, again, prior to the refit, it's lasted pretty well, but as you can see, we've moved things around. After this summer season, I think we'll whip it off and just replace it so it looks a little bit better. You can see the boat's fairly well equipped. We've obviously got VHF radio. We've got an AIS system. We've got the winch controls. You can see here, we've got a rudder indicator, which I find very, very useful because it's a twin engine boat, remember? So we can steer it without the rudders, just using the controls. We've got a Garmin chart plotter, which has served as well for very, very year, many years. Compass, small radar unit, fish finder. And you'll notice that we've installed exhaust alarms so this gives us a pre-warning of any overheating of the engine plenty of space for drinks holders we've got usb chargers we've got these all around the boat again fire extinguisher here we've put fire extinguishers in every convenient location because once you get a fire on a boat you've got to react quickly the carpet you see is the same as we have on the aft deck it's just high quality, office grade carpet tiles. And these have done three years already. and still in pretty good shape. I think we'll get at least another year out of them, probably an extra year after that. So that means we get a life of about five years. We made our own Bamimi top, um, which is fixed, although it looks like it's one that can be put down. It, we've actually made it fixed, with, but we've got the fittings which we could, if we wanted to, make it go up and down, but it's just much more convenient to have it secured all the time. We have two life rafts fitted, just behind the flybridge. The one with the cover on is, is good for 10 people. 
and another one that we've installed recently is good for 12 people which means we've got a capacity of 22 people we can have in life rafts which is much more than we have ever have on on the boat we've got the radar reflector VHF antenna radon for the radar and we've got a small solar array along with a wind generator which just keeps the batteries topped up um, we could actually if we just increase the solar array slightly and with breeze every day we could manage to keep the fridge working without having to plug into shore power we'll notice that the windscreen is missing I've taken that off we're in the process of just getting some new acrylic sheet um, which we'll cut and replace. Um, if I get it done this week, I'll post it just after this segment of the video. If not, you'll all have to wait. Um, and we've got a, we have installed an LED spotlight, um, which if, we're, if we've got to raise the anchor at night or do anything at night, we've got a lit four deck. On the aft deck now and you can see we've done quite a bit of work on here this is the main ice box lifts up and we've got a nice big ice chest inside when this is full the ice will last for three or four days so from the main ice box we will feed these two smaller ice boxes which will keep things cold for about a day and a half. Plenty of storage space in there for drinks, additional water, food, and that all supplements the fridge that we have. We have a, a, a really big fridge inside, which runs off 24 volt and the domestic bank. So we can, we could manage going away for seven days. And as long as we were careful and manage things correctly, we would be fine for cold drinks, um, storing food, etc. I am toying with the idea of actually fitting a freezer box as well. But you know what it's like, when you've got a boat, the projects never stop. So I want a generator, I want an ice box, I guess I want a bigger boat. Little sink that we've recently installed, really useful. And um, particularly now that we have the coronavirus around. Um, and you can see here, sanitizer dispenser, paper towel dispenser, another fire extinguisher, bottle crusher, bottle opener. And you know, we do practice group therapy on this boat. Life ring with line and light, so we can throw that. And that supplements the life sling that we have mounted on the back. We've got two boat hooks and then various fishing paraphernalia. We're not very good fishermen. We're definitely not sport fishermen. But, you know, if we do fish, we'd only fish just for the pot and just take one or two. But as I say, this is not the world's most successful fishing boat. You know, we're much better at scuba diving. This over here is a little personal locator beacon, which I keep there in lieu of a um, ERIB. You know, we're not far offshore. So this, this device is registered with the UK Coast Guard in my name. So hopefully if the worst did happen, I just activate it. The UK Coast Guard would then contact the UA Coast Guard and people would know where we are. And that would supplement the UA Coast Guard rescue system that we have to have fitted mandatory. Plus we have the AIS, which is not mandatory. Notice on the half deck that we can activate the engine room fire extinguishers from outside rather than having to go inside to the helm as we used to have to. Very important safety feature. Continuing on a theme of safety, we've got these really nice tea bag holders which we keep life jackets in so we can quickly get to life jackets. Everyone who comes on the boat says, oh, what are they? What's in there? We just tell them, the life jacket. So everyone who comes on the boat knows where life jackets are. 
We also have life jackets on the flybridge under the seats, all easy to reach. So if we do have to abandon ship, we can do it quickly and safely. The table you see is an ABS catering table that can be folded away. Um, when we're out um, at anchor barbecuing with a few people on board, it's nice to have a nice big table. We've modified the table by fixing a fiddle to stop things falling off. And we've custom made these can and bottle holders. So if we do get a big wake coming by, it's quite, quite secure. And finally, as I made the decision that this would be a plastic bottle free boat about a year ago, we have a, a custom made holder for this water, water cooler, which we fill with ice and water. And as you see, it can be easily removed. So there's cold water on the boat all the time. And we use little aluminium bottles which we give to people as a little giveaway as well to remind them not to use plastic bottles. Same carpet that's, that we've got on the flybridge. Um, the, the damp spots is we've just cleaned the carpet and it's not dried before I shot the video. Nice big uh, trash bin. And you'll notice even on the inside on when you go around, we are required under the Coast Guard regulations to fit various signage. And this is one of them. We've got the sign here on the outside and that's just to remind people not to throw things overboard. That's the escape hatch, push the seat away and exit through the rear state room. That was not an original feature on the boat I believe, um, but we, I thought it was a good idea that we do that because if we stay on the boat quite a lot and if we have a fire in the salon area we can't get out of that state room and the windows, as you've seen, are far too small to jump out of. No video on the aft deck would be complete without our trusty Force 10 barbecue, but we've converted it from running off small bottles of butane to running on propane. And we've also fabricated and made, made this little wind protector because wind did tend to blow the gas out. As soon as we fitted this, stop the wind coming in it worked fine it takes a little while to heat up but once the grill's nice and hot we can really get some food off there quickly we've got the gas cylinders under the ladder well ventilated with a nice powder coated aluminium cover which we fabricated ourselves and we run the gas line up on the outside of the hull from the flexible hose into stainless steel along up through the rubbing strake so very very neatly done and then that goes along here up to the barbecue so um, I would have preferred to run it through the boat and through the handrails but it really it was it was too much work to justify. I think we've come up with a nice compromise. And this is our life sling system. So if somebody does go over overboard, this will be deployed virtually instantly. We'll circle around them, as you see there, and hopefully pick them up without having to jump in the water ourselves. We've got a nice sun canopy on the aft deck. That's, I put that on when I first got the boat 20 years ago, um, which we custom fabricated. It's done very, very well. Um, and we've only had to change the canopy once. Um, the original fabric lasted just under 20 years, so I was quite pleased with that. We put exactly the same fabric back, so hopefully we get another good 20 years out of it. Coming to the after the boat, you can see we've installed a custom made swim and diving platform, along with this very heavy duty ladder which you can see from the design just folds down into the water gimmers a nice angle that we can climb up so we don't have to climb up with diving equipment on vertically and older people as well if they're just swimming it's nice and easy for, 
for them to get out. We've also installed handrails. So if a boat goes past while you're standing on the, on the swim platform, you can just grab it quite easily. It's also a nice place to put fins when you're kidding up to go in the water. On the hull underneath, we put brand new propellers, which we bought from Timebridge. Um, we did have to re-pitch them, um, but again, I'm pretty satisfied with the result. They're pretty close to original now. Um, I did get the um, report for these engines on the set, similar craft from the factory, um, giving us the prop details. So we've tried to replicate that as much as possible. Here, you'll see the windows, which we, or the portholes, which we changed all 20 years ago with Vetus um, port lights. We had to do some, cut some holes, bigger holes and fit them, but they came out really nice. When we, you'll notice now, some have a different frame because the ones that are fixed are fine. They don't open and they're watertight but the ones that used to open started to leak. When we went to Vetus to get new seals, oh, sorry, sir, we don't make them anymore. You'll have to buy new ones. So we were forced to buy five new port lights. Two on this, uh, three on this side, because it includes a bathroom, and two on the other side. You can see the lights are on here. We've got underwater lights at the rear and, and the, the rear quarters of the boat which make the boat look really nice at night. That concludes the walk around and the, and the talk about what we've done to the boat externally. Um, I hope you found it interesting. Um, next week I'll be posting another video and going through what we've done internally and so you can see how well the boat's being preserved and how much we like looking after her.